Before BMX, Bob Tedesco raced cars, fast ones too, and he was pretty successful at it, setting and breaking records in his special Z11 Chevy with a lean, mean 427 under the hood. He also liked to go fast on the water, taking his family skiing behind his jet speedboat. But all of that changed in 1975 when he bought BMX bikes for his three sons. On that day, the local bike shop owner invited the Tedesco family to check out the racing at North Park BMX in Pittsburgh. Anytime the word race was mentioned, of course, Bob was interested. At that first BMX race, Bob and his wife Polly were talked into volunteering as an official and scorekeeper. And the rest, as they say, is BMX history. Two years later, he'd play a major role in getting the South Park BMX track off the ground a facility that still hosts the Stars and Stripes National to this day. During Bob's tenure at the NBL, starting with his hiring in 1977, and including him being publisher of Total BMX Magazine, forming the President's Cup in 1985, and bringing BMX racing to the masses through ESPN TV coverage, Tedesco served as managing director for decades and helped guide the NBL sanction to many successes. His contributions to BMX were not just stateside. His work with international sanctions and the early formation of the IBMXF as well as the UCI. Bob's years of dedication, international connections, and vision for the sport helped bring BMX racing to finally get the nod from the International Olympic Committee in 2003 as a medal sport for the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games. When Bob Tedesco officially retired from the NBL, it's safe to say that the National Bicycle League was never the same. With four decades of NBL leadership under his belt, we are pleased to welcome Bob Tedesco's long-awaited induction into the National BMX Hall of Fame. First, I'd like to say that I am grateful to the people who nominated me for this award. And I would like to thank them, and I certainly appreciate everyone's support. It goes without saying the Hall of Fame is a prestigious honor. I didn't expect to be standing here receiving this award, but all good things come to those who wait and I'll take it. <laughs> Polly and I spent 35 years of our lives in this great sport of BMX that we all love. It is not only a pleasure to be here, but a pleasure to see so many familiar faces and all my friends. We watched many great young boys and girls grow into adults, and some of them now with their own children racing BMX. What a great feeling it gives me to see this sport come full circle with the next generation. I was very fortunate when this sport took off. Ernie Alexander was operating in the West and George Esser started the NML in Florida. And I was lucky that I was on the ground floor working with George Esser. I was there when George helped form the International Federation. And we talked about someday BMX being in the Olympics. I was also very fortunate to have been able to serve for over 25 years on the International BMX Committee, the IBMXF, which then became UCI. 
As the NBL grew and George passed the baton on, we all worked to accomplish the Olympic gold. There was much ground to work to be done and put in place. For example, the Olympic Committee wanted an international racing calendar. They want a world championship calendar. There had to be more countries involved in the sport. And there also had to be equal representation for the women. This was not an easy task. And it took many years to accomplish. But it made me proud when I was able to stand on the 08 World's Championship track when BMX finally made its debut at the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, China, two weeks later. To give you an example of how hard it was, the first program that we wanted to put in place was the international calendar because we needed a World Cup. There had to be more countries to get involved for us to, to get to the Olympics. So I set off to set a calendar and a promoter came to me and said, he was from Michigan, he said, I can put on a World Cup with a huge pro purse in the Silver Dome, the Pontiac Silver Dome. Wow. We brought Stu Thompson in to build the track, and we, we were set. So the event was going on, and it was going great. So now the pros were up on the gate for their main event. So I thought, nah, now is the time that I need to go square up the money with the promoter to get ready to pay these guys. So I start towards the trailer, and here's the promoter with his briefcase jumping in the car saying, I can't pay the bills and I'm out of here. So just then I turn around and look over my shoulder and the pro main event is crossing the finish line and my worst fear happened. Greg Hill won it. <laughs> I knew I was in trouble. It took the NBL one year to be able to pay all the pros and all the debts from that race. But that started the international race program. <laughs> the next thing we had to do was put a world championship together. So we figured that the best place to go would be to, at that time, our strongest state, Florida with the SSA and, and Alice and the Bixler f family, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Beeler family. Uh, there was Art, his wife, Marie, and Ron Kurtz. We held one of the first world championships there, and there were about 15 countries that came to that event. And one of the people who came was Garrett Dose uh, from Holland. And, and let me say that that event set the standards for all world championships to come. It was a great event and then that series was started. And then both organizations in the US started girl pro classes. So that, that was in place. So in 
So, and, and that's how it, it really came about. Um, being on the BMX Commission gave me a lot of insight into how the Olympics work and how their committees work and all of that. But I am so proud of the sport uh, that our athletes now are considered professionals, just like every other sport. And, and it gives our young people something to, to strive for. So, sometimes in business you can make good decisions and sometimes not so good decisions. <laughs> I would like to tell you some regrets or things, that may not be the right word, Maybe a better way to say it is, if I had to do it over again, I would do it this way. Everyone in the room knows that ABA and MBL were very competitive, to say the least. But this, this part here, is meant for the ABA, or oops, I should say USA BMX. This is meant for management. One, for those of you that didn't know, Clayton John's first track was an NBL track. <laughs> and he lived in the same state that I did, Pennsylvania. He lived in State College, and he built a track there. And if I had to do it over, I would have gotten George Esser to give Clayton a national and hire him before he went to Arizona. And just another remark, Clayton did an awful good job for the ABA. And next, John David, or David, if you're in Louisiana. John was a small ABA track operator in Louisiana when I hired him. He was a very talented young man, and still is. And he's a good salesman. <laughs> Regret? I should have moved John up quicker in the NBL and bought him a Porsche before he went to Arizona. <laughs> and John, I wish you well. BA Junior and BA Senior. <laughs> I can truthfully say that they always treated the NBL and me with the utmost respect and wanted nothing more than to advance the sport of BMX. My regret is that, and, and BAs, both of them bought me a lot of steak dinners. <laughs> but we were never able to unite the NBL and ABA. And as BA said, we, we talked about how would we do it, even though our philosophies were different. How would we unite this sport so that we could continue to grow? And we did talk about USA BMX. but we were just able, never able to put it, up, put it together. Again, I would like to say just how honored I am to have received this award tonight and thank all that helped make this possible. And long live BMX.
Yeah, I'm not going over here.